This is an instructive video on how to attack in chess. Today, we'll be following a model game of what I consider a perfect attacking chess game. I take you back to the Yugoslavian Championship of 1957, in which Nikola Karaklajic played Shreko Nedel Jokic. I hope I pronounced that right. We go e4, c5, already very attacking. It's a Sicilian defense. Let's hope it's an open Sicilian, and it is. So open Sicilians are perfect for attacking chess games. Already, this is perfect. Knight f6, knight c3 to defend the pawn. Still theory, g6 is played. And now bishop e3, g6 marks a dragon Sicilian by the black pieces. And white with bishop e3 are going for a Yugoslav attack. I just think personally that is extremely fitting since this is the Yugoslav championship. Bishop g7 and now we go f3 and now queen d2. This is a typical Yugoslav attack formation. You can also call this the English attack in other lines but in here it's the Yugoslav attack. So d5 is now played by the black pieces that aims to open up the center here and try to trade pawns so that black gains activity in the center. The white pieces play super well here. So Nicola goes with e5. Instead of taking on d5, you're hitting the knight, gaining a tempo and gaining space on the king's side. Knight d7 is played and we just defend our pawn by gaining space again with f4. Super nice move. Knight b6, recalibrating that knight to b6 and now we castle. Castling is actually a super attacking move. Here you are developing this rook on this semi-open d-file, but also you're connecting your rooks in case you need a d-rook to swing over to g1 and help these pawns escalate the board. You see, what you want to do is open the lines on the king by storming your pawns and then trading up against other pawns to open up files. That is one of the best ways to attack, particularly in this game. The opponent goes with knight c6 and we follow up with knight f3. He's avoiding trades, which is kind of good. You systematically want to avoid trades, keep pieces on the board, so you have more pieces to storm the king. e6 is a mistake, says the game review. And now Nicola goes with probably the best setup I've seen. This is so clean, take notes. He starts off his attack with h4. This is the first attacking move of the game. h4 wants h5 to open the h-file and open up this rook on the h-file. It's very clean plan, right? So black has to go, like engine checked, has to go h5 here. It's still small advantage white already. And now you have created a very nice attacking device for white. Here, you have what is called a hook. So this pawn here cannot move forward or backward, it's stuck. So whenever you want, you can push g4 to attack this pawn and force the opening of a file. Or you play g4 and the pawn takes you. And then you have h5 and you can try to open up a file this way. A very nice way to create a ruffle in this king side. Karaklaic has g4 immediately, just as an attacking device. But he misses this and plays bishop c5 instead. The engine gives an accuracy because the engine wants to give the an exchange with knight d7 and says that this is inaccurate. But we're humans here, knight e7 is played, and Nicola gets a really nice pair of pieces on the king side and on the queen side here. And reckon, black is supposed to attack this queen, si queen side castled king, but just doesn't have the, the artillery yet or the initiative. So another thing that's really, really nice with the white pieces is that white controls this game with what we call initiative. The initiative to start attacking pieces first, to start an attack with h4 and force a response, to start an attack on the rook with bishop c5 and force a response of, bishop, of knight e7, and now to bring pieces to nicer squares. So knight b5, a6, you see black gained back a little bit of the initiative by forcing a knight move, but now this knight is what we call in a blockade position. So you are blockading a pawn with a knight. This was invented by Aaron Nimzovich in my system, I believe, or chess practice, one of those two. And 
it's just a minor piece of, a minor piece blocking a pawn so that there's no counterplay by the black pieces and black cannot open up the the position on their own. Knight d6, d7, and now we go bishop d6. Look at this terrific bishop. So peace placement is exceptionally, exceptionally valuable when you're attacking your opponent. The piece is so well placed that it's keeping a pinned knight here, and you're tying up your piece, your opponent's pieces in a bind, which is also a big key to successfully attacking, reducing the activity of your opponent's very pieces so they can defend less well. Rook e8 getting out of the pin, pretty self-explanatory. And now we go knight g5. Oof. Also, I forgot to mention what was created by this h5 move is that now pawns cannot go backwards, would say Victor Korshnoi, very good chess player. And black cannot play h6 to kick the knight anymore. So this knight has a terrific placement angled around the king that, that black cannot do anything ab about. You can't kick the knight anymore unless you give up one of your main key defenders, this bishop, which is not even a discussion topic because this bishop is far too valuable for defensive purposes. Knight f8, bishop e2, and now we see Nicolas' plan. Uh, of course, all along this path, you can play g4, which is here it's already winning, says the engine. Plus three, white is better, it's done. But okay, Nicola has space and time in this position because black has a very low counterplay. So you basically have time to play a slow move like bishop e2 to help escalate g4 and defend it. And also you're simultaneously connecting your rooks, which is a good attacking device as well. Knight c6 is played, I guess, to try to trade knights, but white starts the initiative here with knight takes c6, forcing a black move, and now g4. Pa, pa, pa. This is how you attack in chess. You force moves out of your opponent, and you get a good move in g4. My mic fell. G4 is exceptional. Here you are forcing the opening of a line, either by H takes and you're gonna go H5 and for sure H takes or G takes and then you're gonna open the H file or the G file. G4 forces something out of black. H takes G4 and now white escalates the attack with H5. No time to take this pawn. It's not a valuable pawn. You can take it whenever you want. It's garbage. You want to attack by opening up the H file to activate your rook. Maybe get a queen on H2. Maybe just to checkmate the king. Opponent goes G takes H5. It's either that or I'm taking your pawn and opening up my rook. So G takes H5 is a fine move. Rook takes and now F6. You might have realized on the left side of your screen that eval bar is completely up for the white pieces, meaning white is completely winning. It's, it's over basically. It's already over. F6 is played. The last like try, although it's not even close. So here white finds a really nice resource. The aim of f6 is to pressure e5 and that if I take, you know, my bishop is not defended anymore, you can try to take that. There's a really nice resource here for the white pieces. Actually, e takes f6 is still completely fine, which was played in the game. And if you dare take my bishop on d6, I have the soothing f7 fork pawn checkmate. So of course this wasn't played, but bishop f6 was played. And now you want to save your bishop and he plays the only good move that saves the bishop from this attack and brings it back into the play. So a famous quote by American chess grandmaster Yasser Sarawan, who was at his peak number two in the world, he said, invite everyone to the party. And that's exactly what this move aims for, pardon. The bishop is now recast into the attack, slicing through a lot of this king's squares. And if you take this bishop, well, okay, I can just take back and I've removed one of your defenders. Very, very clean, also a great attacking device. So. Not only are you bringing a piece back into the attack, you're threatening to remove black's best defender. Knight g6 was played in the game, and now it's already checkmate in seven moves. Force checkmate in seven moves. And he found it, actually, which is quite crazy. Nicola goes queen d3, threatening this knight. And surprisingly, you can't really defend this knight with a legal move by black, which is crazy. So it, the knight has to move, and black plays knight takes e5. Okay, you could take... But then there's like bishop takes g5 and you lose a piece. You're still completely winning, but 
here, White has this thing, sensational move. Try to find it. Pause the video to solve. Three, two, one, you best solve the puzzle. Here, White plays Rook H8. I think this was in one of my videos, actually, but it's a decoy tactic on this bishop. If the king takes, it's deflected to, it's decoyed to a wrong square, and now queen h7 H is checkmate. If the bishop takes on h8, you have now decoyed a weak piece to the square, and now the move queen h7 check works. You see, if you tried queen h7 check now, black can go king f8, and it's still winning, but you have to find this with rook f1 ideas. So here with rook h8 check and bishop takes, after queen h7 check, king here, there's no bishop on f6 taking up h8. So you can just take on h8 with check, king e7, queen g7, knight f7, and now queen takes f7, forcing the king to d6, and potentially the most beautiful move of this game for last. Karakraic goes with knight e4, checkmate. It is a pinned pawn knight taking open square checkmate on the king and that resumes how to attack in chess with probably the most instructive attacking chess game I have ever seen in my life. h4 to create that hook, g4 to force the opening of a file, bringing nice pieces in the position, bishop c5, bishop d6 maneuver, knight b5, knight d4 maneuver, Every piece collaborated for this game. Knight on g5 was nicely placed. Oh my goodness. Every, every piece did something. You really invited everyone to the party. And I would say even this rook that was castled long and didn't move of the game, except for the castling move, collaborated for this final checkmate. Isn't that crazy? This bishop helped lift this pawn. This knight went to g5 and was the best piece probably of this game and played checkmate. This queen came in at the final moment to attack a vulnerable knight on g6 that couldn't be defended. Every piece was invited to the party. And if you have one thing to take away from this video, invite everyone to the party.